Ever wondered how scientists ensure the accuracy and reliability of their experiments? Well, it all boils down to the art of experimental design, a cornerstone in the world of scientific research. It's not just about mixing chemicals or observing phenomena, it's about the meticulous application of three basic principles, randomization, replication, and local control. These principles dictate the validity and success of an experiment. Intrigued yet? Let's dive into these principles to understand their significance. First off, we have randomization. But what does it mean in experimental design? Well, randomization is a fundamental principle that plays a key role in creating a sound experimental design. It's the process of assigning subjects or experimental units to treatment groups in a random manner. This helps to reduce bias and ensures that the experiment's results are not influenced by any hidden or unaccounted factors. Imagine you're testing two different fertilizers on plants. Randomization would mean assigning each plant to a fertilizer type randomly, rather than, say, giving one type to all the plants on the left and the other to those on the right. This way, any differences in the plant's growth can be attributed to the fertilizers, not to where they were placed. Randomization thus acts as a safeguard against potential bias and confounding variables, ensuring the validity of the experiment. So in a nutshell, randomization helps to ensure that the experiment's results are due to the treatment and not some other hidden factors. Moving on to our second principle, replication. Why is it essential in experimental design? Well, think of replication as your trustworthy friend who always double-checks your work. In the realm of experimental design, replication is the practice of repeating an experiment multiple times under the same conditions. It's like baking a cake. You follow the same recipe again and again to ensure that the result, a delicious cake, isn't a fluke. The aim here is to confirm the results and reduce variability. Replication helps us ascertain that the observed effect is not due to random chance, but is a consistent result of our experiment. Just like how every cake you bake following the same recipe tastes equally delightful. Hence, replication strengthens the reliability of the experiment's outcomes. Last but not least, we have the principle of local control. But what does it entail? Imagine you're conducting an experiment on plant growth rates. You can't randomize sunlight, can you? No, but you can use local control to account for this variable. By grouping plants that receive similar amounts of sunlight together, you control the effect of sunlight on your experiment. This principle applies to any factor that can't be randomized, but can significantly impact your results. Like if you were testing the performance of athletes, you'd want to control for factors like age or experience level. Therefore, local control aids in maintaining the integrity of the experiment. It ensures that the conclusions drawn are due to the variables we're interested in, not some uncontrollable external factor. So, we've learned about the three basic principles of experimental design. Randomization, ensuring our experiment isn't biased. Replication, repeating our work to confirm its reliability. And local control, minimizing the effect of nuisance variables. These principles are crucial in establishing the accuracy and reliability of our scientific experiments. They're not just steps, they're the pillars holding up the entire process. Remember, a well-designed experiment lays the foundation for valid and reliable scientific research. Stay curious and keep learning.